We welcome you to Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church is designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now get ready for a heavy word of God from Pastor Scotty Terrain. Get ready for the word. But I can simply call him by his name, and he understands my heart. Somebody in here know what it is to, 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 to cry yourself to sleep at night. But somewhere in the midst, you, oh, you couldn't even put the words together, and you just called on the name Jesus. And the next thing you knew, it was the morning. Uh, yeah, somebody knows what it is to seem to be friendless, but when you called on Jesus, the comforter showed up. Jesus, there's something about that name. Let's turn in our words, words to Luke, Luke, the 23rd chapter. I certainly want to thank God for uh, Sister Keisha Vines, who's here with us, I guess, on spring break. Amen. Amen. Virginia Tech, right? Amen. VTech, another athlete. Amen. So we certainly thank God that he is keeping our young folk, even as they are uh, away in college, uh, performing in athletics at, on the D1 level. Amen. 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 Yes, indeed. 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 All right. Do we have it? All right. All right. That's the 23rd chapter. Luke 23rd chapter, the 39th verse, starting at the 39th verse. I'm going to see if I can preach without getting excited today. <laughs> uh, y'all knew that wasn't even going to work. I don't even know what y'all heard. 39th verse, 39th verse, and it reads, <clears throat> Then one of the criminals, reading out of the New King James, who were hanged, blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do, not, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our own deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 43 says, and Jesus said to him, assuredly. I think King James says, verily, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. We want to talk from a thought today. The wisdom of a thief. The wisdom of a thief. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, God, for who you are, and thank you for how you blessed and kept us. Ask now, God, that you would infuse me with your spirit, that you would give me preaching power under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ask God that you'd give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech, to the end that I may effectively share this gospel, that men's minds and ways may be changed. 
We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The wisdom of a thief. There was a shady cast of characters around the cross and on the Via Dolorosa and in the courtyard milling about in the temple area. The disciples have now all fled except the beloved disciple, John. The women, the women are weeping and the heart of Mary, his mother, is pierced. There is a heaviness over the assembly. There is a long dirge up Calvary. The awful deed of crucifixion is taking place. And in the midst of the gore, in the midst of the blood, in the midst of the screaming, the midst of the tears, the midst of the mocking and jeering, no one gets it but a thief. Well, Judas has already hung himself. That's right. Pharisees are there. Sadducees are there. Pilate was there. Herod was there. The soldiers, they're there. The public crowd is there. But no one senses it but a thief. The Pharisees, they represented ecclesiasticism, but they didn't get it. Sadducees, they represented privilege, but they didn't get it. Judas represented nationalism, but he didn't get it. Pilate represented opportunism, but he didn't get it. Herod represented secularism, but he didn't get it. The soldiers, they represented militarism, but they didn't get it. The public yielded to a wicked government in alliance with a blasphemous religion, but they still didn't get it. The only person that got it was a thief. Walk with me, if you will, in this text. There are two malefactors, two hardened criminals, two low-down delinquents, one on the left and one on the right. One is dying in sin, for he says, if you be the Christ, I don't know, but if you be Christ, then come down, save yourself and us. That's selfish. That's cheap grace. That's using Christ for your own ends. That's hedging your bets. That's playing both ends against the middle. You could be, but I don't know. But if you are, do something to help yourself, and while you're at it, throw us in there with you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's Christianity on the margins. That's Christianity on the edge. That's one foot in and one foot out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming this week and missing three weeks. Uh, that's showing up Easter, Christmas, and Mother's Day kind of faith. Uh, that, that's here one year and gone one year. If you be the Christ. Only people that live uh, on the margins use the word if when it comes to Christ. Only those who are on the edge use if when they're talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The thief on the right, however, is dying to sin. The thief on the left is dying in sin. The thief on the right who is dying to, to sin recognizes that the man in the middle is dying for sin. Mm -hmm. This thief rebukes his partner in crime. He rebukes the other malefactor. He silences the other by saying, don't you even fear God? Uh, we're dying on a cross uh, uh, right now, and yet you don't fear God? Uh, this man has done nothing, King James says, amiss. He's done nothing wrong. We're here because we deserve to be here. Life didn't put them there. Uh, the devil didn't put them there, but their choices in life put them there. And he says, we're here because we put ourselves here. 
he knew that there was a wrath that was deserved. That's my first point, a wrath deserved. And I think I ought to tell somebody here today with your Easter outfit on, with your new do and possibly even your new boo, uh, 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 with your new clothes and looking real churchy. But beneath all of that and behind all of that, we are all sinners in need of grace. Uh huh. All of us in here right now deserve the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. All of us deserve eternal, uh, eternal punishment. Because Romans 3 and 23 says uh, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody in here ought to be in line going to hell. Come on. Woo, they got quiet. I didn't, I... Okay, okay. Everybody in here ought to be in line going to hell. But the only thing that blesses us, he died for us. The only reason we're not busting hell wide open right now is he died for us. Not that we were so good, not that we were perfect, not that we pulled it together, not that we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps, but simply he died for us. Mm. Uh, died to satisfy God's wrath for sinners who deserve it. That's the fallacy of prosperity preaching. And this new gospel that's being proclaimed across our nation, uh, you have to understand that we don't deserve anything. Uh, we don't deserve anything from God that is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and God, 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 if God had given us what we deserved, uh, got to go to the hand. Well, if he had given us what we deserve, None of us would be here. Uh, you have to understand that, that we can't go to God with some incantation. We can't do the right things. We can't say the right things and cause him to bless us, cause him to be in our debt. But we're in his debt. The only thing that God owes us is wrath, death, hell, and judgment. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. It's not popular to talk about hell on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. But the reason Easter makes sense is God was so merciful toward us that the wrath that should have been poured out on me, I'm going to talk about me. The wrath that should have been poured out on me was poured out on his son, Jesus Christ. He died to take away my sin. The wrath that I deserve, he took on Calvary. Mm-hmm. But the Pharisees didn't get it. Sadducees didn't get it. A thief got it. He said, we deserve what we're receiving. Uh -huh, that's a wrath deserved. But now I need you to look at a wisdom displayed. Now this man is a thief. An habitual criminal. Hasn't been to the temple, hasn't made any offerings, hasn't prayed any prayers. But looking at Jesus, there is a wisdom that he displays that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, Herod, Pilate, the soldiers, the crowd, nobody got it but the thief. Just looking at Jesus, he says, this man has done nothing wrong. Where would he have heard that? Who could he have known in the circles in which he ran that would have told him that? Uh, there was no foreknowledge of who Jesus was, only a look. He wasn't there when Jesus turned the water into wine. He was nowhere to be found when Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. He was nowhere to be found when Jesus was on the Sea of Galilee and his disciples said, Master, don't you care that we're going to perish out here? He didn't see Jesus walking on the water. He wasn't in the house when they let down the paralytic man through the ceiling on his bed and Jesus healed him. He wasn't there in that revival. How would he know? Who in his group would have told him this? The only thing he had, y'all, was a look. Simply a look. And I want to encourage somebody here this morning 
Just take another look at Jesus. His brow, his countenance, uh, 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 his person deserves another look. Nobody anywhere compares to my Jesus. He's in a class all by himself. And can I say, as a Christian, I am proud to say that there's none like Jesus. And we, the body of Christ, have, have got to stop backing up from the world who's trying to force us to proclaim that he was simply a good man who did good things, who had a good philosophy. No, the devil is a lie. He was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He's in a class all by himself. Yes, yes, yes. He's, uh, he's not in the same category as Socrates. He's not in the same genre uh, as Aristotle, Plato. He's not even in the same group with Napoleon. And we need to stop allowing people to force us or to try to force us to take down because he is who he is. And I don't know who he is in your life, but I can tell you who he's been to me. Everybody has a testimony of how he's shown up and showed out in your life. So I need you to tell I need to tell you that when the world comes against us, we got to stand. Yeah, 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 good man. For real? Nicodemus was a good man. John the Baptist was a good man. Peter was a good man. Paul was a good man. Scott is a halfway good man. And we don't come close to comparing to Jesus. No, he's better than a good man. He is our savior. He's our king. He's our Lord. He's our master. He's whatever you need him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take another look. Uh, take another look. Uh, when you look at Jesus, if you're sick, <laughs> he'll be your doctor. If you're in trouble, he'll be your lawyer. If you're out, he has a way of bringing you in. If you're down, he has the ability to pick you up. And if you don't know which way to turn, he has the ability to give you direction. Only a look. We've got to stop looking at man and stop looking at each other and look at Jesus. Look. Let me, let, let, let me just lay this out. I'm not going to stand here and let a thief get it, and I don't get it. I know I'm halfway crazy, but I ought to have as much sense as a thief. Some of y'all agree with that a little too readily. Yeah, a little too readily. Uh, so you got to understand, we come in the house of the Lord. We hear his name. Sunday after Sunday, come to Bible study, hear his name, Sunday after Sunday. We can't keep going through this. We can't keep hearing this. We can't keep being in his word and let a thief get it, and we don't get it. Uh, but the only way I know you get it is when you hear his name, you got to say something. You got to do something. You can't look at Jesus and not feel something. Uh, you can't look at Jesus and not say something. You, you can't look at Jesus. As a matter of fact, the songwriter said, if I couldn't say a word, I... Uh, uh -huh. Hear me, y'all. Makes no sense to get up early on Sunday morning. Pull your stuff together. Do your hair and your makeup. Tighten yourself up. Slide in the pew with all these folk in here hot and hear the name of Jesus and go to sleep. We could have stayed at home if we were going to sleep. But there's something about the name Jesus. The more I call him, the better I feel. The more I call him, the sweeter it sounds to my soul. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the midnight hour. Anybody know there's power in the name of Jesus? Power to change your situation, power to heal your body, power to save your soul, 
when it's in the name of Jesus. Uh, all right. Uh, so wrath deserved a wisdom displayed. But thirdly, there was a worship demonstrated. Uh, he tells his partner in crime, leave the man alone. Stop cursing him. Stop railing on him. Don't you even fear God? This man has done nothing amiss. But get this. Here it is. Here's the worship. Lord. Just looking at Jesus and being in his presence, he calls him Lord. But y'all know what? Pharisees didn't get it. Sadducees didn't get it. Herod, Pilate, soldiers, nobody worshiped at the cross but a thief. Thank God a thief got it. Thank God a crook got it. And I thank God some other crooks in here this morning got it. Uh-huh, I ain't looking at nobody. I'm raising my hand. Uh, I wish I had a few witnesses in here that was honest enough to say uh, that you should be in jail or you should be in hell. If you had been caught, you'd have been killed. But the grace of God kept us. The grace of God covered us. Even when we didn't want to be kept, he has a way of keeping us from ourselves. He came and worshiped. Uh, somebody can testify that God will come and rescue you. Mm -hmm. He will pull you out of whatever you're in. And you can cry, Lord, when you're coming to your kingdom. I know I don't deserve it. I know I'm not worthy. I know I should be punished. But Lord, remember me. Is there anybody who's ever had to say, Lord, remember me? Don't forget about me. I'm in a dark place. I'm in a place of trouble. But Lord, don't forget about me. I'll stay here and wait on you. Just send me a sign you haven't forgot about me. Just let me know you're coming to take care of your child. Lord, remember me. Songwriter said, will the Lord remember me when I'm called to go? When I've crossed death chilly sea, will he his love there show? Oh, yes, he heard my feeble cries from bondage set me free. And when I reach the pearly gates, he will. So y'all playing this morning. He will. Uh, go, with your, go ahead and go with what you got to go through, but he will. If you've cried out to the Lord and you've asked him to save you, if you've asked him to be your deliverer, he will. He will remember you. Even in the darkest of times, he'll remember you. Uh, uh, and I'm just crazy enough to believe, Sister Evans, that there's somebody in here just like that crook who said, Lord, remember me. But the reason some of us can't get saved is we think we're pretty good. But the truth of the matter is everybody in here deserves eternal damnation. But as this thief, that crook got it, I thank God that we get it this morning. Uh, but one day I cried, Lord, remember me. I, I lied. I messed up. I blew it. But Lord, remember me. Okay, let me really help you. I ain't talking about your before Christ days. I'm talking about your... Lord, I blew it. Lord, I lied. Lord, I stole. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I slept with who I shouldn't be sleeping with. Lord, I was where I didn't need to be. But Lord... Remember me. He doesn't remember you because of your merit. Because we've been so good. But because we cry to him, remember us. Because the truth of the matter is, most of us right now still have a trace of who we used to be in us. And given the opportunity we go bad right now, if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of God. Don't, don't play with it now. Don't, don't, Y'all know it, it don't take nothing but somebody to cut you off on the highway 
for that old man to... Okay, that's my thing. So maybe that ain't your thing. Y'all pray for the pastor while he on the interstate because I... But we all got a thing. Y'all chuckling, but I know you're chuckling because we all got a thing. My thing may not be your thing, but you got one. And every now and then, the devil will run up and push that button. And if you ain't careful... All right. So wrath deserved, wisdom displayed, worship demonstrated. But lastly, there is a wealth discovered. He says, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, I know, I know, I know I don't deserve it. But would you remember me? Jesus says, assuredly. King James Version, verily. That means surely means show sure enough, means for real, for real, uh, means I ain't playing, means you can put, this, put your weight on this. Assuredly, I say to you, you'll be with me, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, you, I need you to see this because he leans over to a thief that's on a cross that he put himself on. He doesn't ask him if he's guilty. He doesn't ask him if he did it because at this point, it does not matter. The blood has already been shed. Only pseudo immature Christians want to know what you did, when you did it, who you did it with, and how many times you did it. But he doesn't even ask the thief that. He says, today you'll be with me in paradise. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't even have to own a Bible. You don't have to be a deacon. You don't have to sing in the choir. But today you'll be with me in paradise. Because y'all know we always want the details. I need you to pray for, okay, what, what, you, what, what happened? What happened? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And, and, and who was with you? Because I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Look, did, did you know so-and-so called me and wanted me to pray? And they done. So this is how to close the conversation. So we're going to pray for them. Come on. Don't get churchy on me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But Jesus doesn't even ask the man. If he's guilty, he simply says, today you'll be with me in paradise. First Peter 3 and 18 picks it up and says, for Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, hell, who formerly were disobedient. There was a conversation that is not in the text. There was a conversation that is not stated in the text that I want to share with you this morning as I close. And he's looked over and Jesus has told him, today I'll be with you will be with me in paradise. But the rest of the conversation is this. You go on to paradise, I'll meet you there. I've got to run, i got to make, i got to stop by hell and set some folk free. Uh, there's some folk who are locked up. There's some folk who are bound. I've got to go get Scotty. I've got to go get Donnell. I've got to go get Pam. Uh, I've got to go get Martin. I've got to go get Chris. I've got to go get Steve. I've got to go get some. I've got to go get whoever is bound and set them free, but I'll meet you there. Is there anybody in this sanctuary who will admit you are a whosoever? He came where you were and found you in your mess. But he didn't leave you there. He began to clean you up. He began to put you back together. He began to make you better. You were just like Steve Austin. He made you better than you were before, Dwight. He'll do it because he has that kind of power. He went down in the grave. Stayed there three long days. But Reverend Enoch would tell you that early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, 
he got up. And because he got up, you can get up. Because you don't have to wait to get to paradise to give God glory. Because he's kept you, you ought to bless him. Because he keeps healing us, we ought to bless him. Because he keeps giving to us, we ought to bless him. If a thief got it, surely we can get it. If a thief had that wisdom, surely we can walk in that wisdom. If a thief recognized who he was, surely when we take another look, Because see, when you look, you only see what you need for right now. Somebody looked last week, and you had whatever this is that's in the air. You couldn't breathe. Your sinuses were stopped up. You were coughing all over the place. And you looked, and he was your healer. But if you look today, he'll be your provider when it's meal time. See, every now and then, you got to take another look. That's the challenge because he operates in one area. Sister Woods, we get comfortable with him right there, and we want to keep him right there. But we serve a God who says, when I ask, who do I tell them sent me? He says, I am. I am what? That's a blank right there, and you put in what it is you need them to be. So I'm glad today. Y'all, come on, cuz stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I'm feeling it. That we serve a God who keeps us, who delivers us. And all we've got to do is as the thief did, and in your darkest hour, simply take a look at Jesus. Because here's the real, here's the real hook. You can never enter his presence and leave the same. So today, if you're here, And you've never committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we offer Christ to you. He will keep you. He will bless you. He will restore you. He is an awesome God. We don't tell you you won't go through any challenges. But we will tell you that he'll keep you in the midst of every challenge. Every circumstance, we all get to a point where we've tried everything we know and everything else will eventually fail. But this morning we offer Jesus, try Jesus. We'll pick you up and turn you around and we'll establish your going. Maybe you hear and you know the love, the power the deliverance of a loving God. But you tried to make it on your own and now you want to come back and be reunited with Christ. We offer Christ to you as well. The ministers will greet you at the altar. We'll minister to you. Amen. If not, you may be seated. We are about to prepare for communion. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, get the uh, table covering. Okay. Um, please, ma'am, please, sir, let me ask this. If you don't leave, we're not going to be long. If you don't have to leave, please don't leave, even if you don't participate in communion. Please don't leave. Stay for the benediction. I, I'm not going to lift another offering. I ain't trying to work you. Stay for the blessing at the end of, of the day. If you, don't, if, if you don't have to get to a job, if nobody's sick, you ain't got to get out of here. 
Y'all give us 10 minutes and we all going to go out of here together. Amen. But if you got to leave, we understand. But I, 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 and we're going we're gonna to teach on it probably our next communion uh, to take some of the mystery out of communion that people don't feel compelled to leave. Uh, I know how it used to be taught in the old church. And if you, if you were under that teaching, you would be scared enough to leave. I have left. Uh, but we serve an, a God of mercy and a God. Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastors, Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church designed for you and mine. Well, the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now, thank you so much for watching, and may God continue to richly bless you.